Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Earlier today, some interesting news broke surrounding AMD Ryzen security flaws. A company called CTS Labs posted a white paper revealing four classes of vulnerabilities that affect Ryzen, Ryzen Pro, Ryzen Mobile, and Epic. Curiously, CTS Labs only gave AMD 24 hours notice before publishing this white paper rather than 90 days or longer, which is standard practice in the security industry. And a bit more on that later. I first wanted to cover the flaws and give you guys a rundown of what has apparently been uncovered. As I mentioned, there are four classes of vulnerability labeled Master Key, Chimera, Rise and Fall, and Fallout, each with a couple of variants. There's a fantastic article over on Anantech that covers each of these variants, so check that out, but I will summarize it all here for you. So, Master Key is the first vulnerability, and it allows arbitrary code execution in the secure processor on Epic and Ryzen processors, provided the attacker reflashes the BIOS to target the ARM Cortex-A5 integrated into these CPUs. The exploit could allow an attacker to disable AMD security features. CTS Labs claims this has been successfully exploited on Ryzen and Epic with Ryzen Pro and Ryzen Mobile potentially affected. Chimera revolves around the Promontory chipset, which could allow remote code execution on the chipset that could attack devices connected through it, like USB, SATA, PCIe, and so forth. The exploit is possible on Ryzen and Ryzen Pro by running malware with both elevated administrator privileges and a digitally signed driver. Ryzenfall exploits the AMD Secure OS by leveraging ARM Trust Zone. With elevated administrator privileges and a vendor-supplied driver, it's possible to exploit the secure processor to arbitrarily execute code, disable memory protection, and authorize protected memory reads and writes. Epic is not affected here, but Ryzen is to varying degrees. And the last one is Fallout. It's an Epic-only vulnerability similar to Ryzenfall in its results, though it requires compromising the bootloader and again requires elevated administrator access and a signed driver. So those are the flaws that have been uncovered. Now, I'm not a security expert or a hacker, but I have been following a bit of the discussion in the security space about these exploits, and to put it simply, there are red flags everywhere. Firstly, I'll circle back to AMD only being given 24 hours notice of these security flaws. The standard practice is to give companies 90 days notice so they can prepare security patches such that systems are protected before word of the vulnerability reaches the public. In the case of Meltdown Inspector, which became public earlier this year, AMD, Intel, ARM and others received almost six months notice before everything was disclosed. CTS Labs gave basically no reason for only providing 24 hours notice other than saying it's a public interest disclosure. I don't really see how this particular set of vulnerabilities is more of a public interest than other disclosures that have seen companies get much more notice. And it's no surprise that in AMD's official statement on the matter, they say, this company was previously unknown to AMD and we find it unusual for a security firm to publish its research to the press without providing a reasonable amount of time for the company to investigate and address its findings. And of course, AMD are actively investigating and analyzing the findings right now. When we asked AMD for a comment on the matter, the vibe we got is AMD had no prior warning about these vulnerabilities and have been completely blindsided. There are a couple of other unusual things about CTS Labs. The company was founded in 2017, so they're a relatively new player, and they have no prior reputation in the security space. In fact, this is their first report. Their website on these vulnerabilities, amdflaws.com, yes, they did buy amdflaws.com, is quite well put together. There's nice graphics, again, unusual for security disclosures. Typically, we just get a white paper with CVE numbers, but here there are no CVE references and instead a visually beautiful website. In CTS Labs legal disclaimer, the company says this. Although we have a good faith belief in our analysis and believe it to be objective and unbiased, you are advised that we may have, either directly or indirectly, an economic interest in the performance of the securities of the companies whose products are the subject of our reports. So a company is founded in 2017, releases one report focusing on AMD vulnerabilities, 
And in their legal disclaimer, they say they may have an economic interest in the securities of the companies they are reporting on. I wonder what company they might have an economic interest in. Now this is just pure speculation on my part here, but it seems like CTS Labs have released news of these vulnerabilities in the hopes that AMD stock will take a dive, allowing the founders of the company and other invested parties to profit. Everything has been nicely constructed for the media through their website, allowing reporters to easily warn the public about these issues, which allows the news to spread and AMD investors to worry. Again, just speculation, but the legal disclaimer, lack of notice given to AMD, and company history do paint a pretty dodgy picture. And let's look a bit closer at the vulnerabilities that were disclosed. Now I should note here that the white paper is very light on technical details and examples on how to use these exploits, things that are usually found in other disclosures. In fact, the CTO of CTS Labs says, we are not putting out technical details and have no intention of putting out technical details ever. More red flags, but uh, let's move on. So the first vulnerability, Master Key, requires the attacker reflash the system BIOS. Now I'm not a security expert, but you can do a hell of a lot of things with someone's system if you're able to flash their BIOS. In fact, if you just give me the physical access to someone's system that is required to flash a BIOS, along with the appropriate privileges to do so, I'll probably be able to steal your data and run whatever code I like. Again, not an expert, but if I can flash a BIOS, I can probably do a lot of other things. Rise and Fall and Fallout both require vendor-supplied signed drivers along with elevated administrator privileges. Again, you can do a lot of things with a booby trap signed driver and admin privileges. It doesn't exactly surprise me that with this level of access, you can do things like execute arbitrary code and access protected memory. Installing a signed driver gives pretty deep access to a system. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised at all if, on an Intel system, you could do similar malicious activities with BIOS flashes and signed drivers. But these exploits only talk about AMD. Again, a bit of speculation here, but there are red flags everywhere with this situation. Now it is possible and even likely that these vulnerabilities are legitimate. But the actual security risk doesn't seem that high when we're talking about needing BIOS flashes admin privileges and signed drivers. And it seems that security experts, along with Linux mastermind Linus Torvalds, agrees that this disclosure is a bit dodgy to say the least. So let's summarize the situation as it stands right now. CTS Labs, a company founded in 2017, released their first white paper detailing Ryzen and Epic vulnerabilities after giving AMD basically no notice. There are no CVE tags for these vulnerabilities, CTS Labs does not and will not release technical details, and their website mentions they may have financial interests in the companies they are reporting on. The vulnerabilities themselves require significant levels of access such as signed drivers, admin privileges, and the ability to flash a BIOS. I'm sure more will come out in relation to these vulnerabilities in the coming days, but right now, looking at all the facts and what has been disclosed, I'm very suspicious of this whole situation. We'll continue to monitor all the reports that come out in relation to these AMD vulnerabilities and keep you guys informed. Let us know what you think of this whole situation in the comments below, and I'll catch you in the next one.